Naked Lunch by William Burroughs. And I'm going to get to the point. What I liked about this book, it has its own voice. Visceral, raw, ferocious, even rabid and feral. But that's about it. Plain and simple. You know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who the characters are. I don't know what they're doing. I don't, I don't understand anything about anything that goes on in this alleged novel. Alleged novel. There is absolutely no structure, if you want to call it. No plot, if you want to call it. that. There's absolutely nothing. Uh, to me, it was a waste of time. You know, I'm not really a fan of these, you know, stream of consciousness uh, outpourings. Not a big fan. Not that that you shouldn't enjoy this. It's just not my cup of tea. Right? Each to his own. To me, this was a great waste of time. I'm, I'm so... I'm almost disappointed that I had to spend money on this because I was expecting something. Anything. Right? Anything. And this... This has to be said. You know, I'm not one to hate anyone's sexual uh, fetishes but i swear to you maybe maybe i'm mistaken but i swear to you that almost almost every page almost every page in this book has something to do with dick's balls mayonnaise wink somebody getting diddled you know and and i'm just like bro okay fine whatever but almost every page i'm like I don't know what to say about this, right? To me, it was just not because of the content necessarily. Like I said, there's there's some good prose. There's an obvious, unique voice here. You know, you might say that there is a style that I, you know, like to a certain degree. But overall, there's, there's, there. It seems, it seems like this, is, this is schizophrenic, autistic, borderline psychotic, which is fine, which is fine. I think that uh, uh, Burroughs even forgot that he wrote this thing. He forgot, you know, writing this thing. Of course, uh, because he was tripping balls. But here's the problem. I prefer something like uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, for example. Uh, instead of this, instead of Naked Lunch, because this is just something. It, it is a scattered, you know, dream, nightmarish, whatever, right? There's n really nothing here, whereas with something like Fear and Loathing, you can still enjoy the trip. You can still enjoy the journey, whatever, the sensations, the the psychosis, the mania, Right? And this is what I have to say about this. It's like, even when you trip on trip balls or are, are drinking while writing, it should be something more than just, you know, incoherent, incomprehensible gibberish, right? Right? There should be more, I don't know, some sort of passion, something to, to keep... Uh, the reader invested, you know, and I suppose that somebody out there uh, has this novel, this novel as his or her favorite, and it's fine, good on you. Maybe you can tell me why you thoroughly love this book, because I really don't understand uh, what's so great about it, what's so, you know, incredible, right? And to think, listen, I've been a writer for 10 years. The publishing world is, you know, a coliseum. It is a battle royale. And to think that something like this was not only published, but it was also later on, it also became acclaimed, right? When you think that there are extremely talented young writers out there who are struggling, struggling, and then because of rejection after rejection they have to self-publish right on amazon or whatever like i did right but it is what it is right yet again i wished 
that I could have enjoyed this. I wish that I had something positive to say about this book, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. Right? And of course, uh, there are some details in the back of the book. You know, this is the revised, completed version. You know, the book caused some sort of scandal. It was a bit too edgy for its time, you know, in the 50s. And of course, you know, if you write dick and balls and diddling and all sorts of, uh, you know, salacious things in the 50s, of course, there will be some problems, you know. I, I think this was considered edgy back in the 50s. Of course, and today... It's, uh, you know, it's whatever, right? But yet again, I truly can see that Burroughs has something that is distinguished. You know, a voice, a visceral rawness, uh, uh, even some a venom. That's what I like to call it, and I like it. He has this uh, rabid hatred that you can tr really discern in his prose in his paragraphs, which I approve of, right? And, you know, some advice to aspiring writers. If you're going to trip balls, you know, do better than just these, you know, scrambled, scattered ramblings about something or another, right? Have, have the decency to uh, produce something more, right? This is what I have to say. If you're going to write create something of greatness that will stand the test of time. And this book, unfortunately to me, does not hold up. It is what it is, right? It is what it is, right? And and to, to illustrate just how over uh, this book I am, you know, I didn't, I didn't even bother uh, to, to read the extras. The extras. We have a couple of letters from Burroughs to whatever we have. You know, the scandal regarding, you know, Naked Lunch when it was published. And all of that. All of the trivia. Right? And then you have, you know, some text that was cut out and then it was, it was added back. You know, I didn't bother to read all of this miscellaneous, all of this extra. You know, after the book was done. I didn't bother because... It's more of the same. It's more of the same, right? Unfortunately. Un unfortunately. Right, so... In the end... In the end... This Naked Lunch by William, Bur William Burroughs was a... I would say a, a disappointment, unfortunately. But because yet again I have to say this, I wanted to love this book. Every book deserves to be loved, but this is just, I don't know, this is somebody scribbling something, right? Yeah, and I have to say this, the book is not entirely devoid of any value, of any value, but this, listen, the best books will haunt you. This is not a book that will haunt you in any way, shape, or form. Yes, it has some visceral vitriol in here, and a, a certain rhythm, a cadence, yes, yes, there is. But overall, in this book, it, it, it will not haunt your nightmares. Not, none, none of the things that happen here will haunt your nightmares, because it's just something that happens, you know, violent things that happen to people who are, you know, not even one-dimensional, right? Do better, write books that will haunt your readers forever. That's the advice that I can give to anybody who is attempting to be a writer. If you want to support your boy, I got a few books on Amazon. The link will be down below. You know, keep on reading good books. Thanks for watching. See ya.